All right, we're going to get started. We are minus one panelist, but I'm sure that Rebecca just needs a second. So whenever Rebecca shows up, she can join. But we're going to go ahead and get started so that we can be on time. Yay! So <laughs> welcome, everybody, to this panel. Um, I'm the moderator, May, and I am the founder of Inclusion Comics. And what I'll do a little intro about myself. Why not? Um, and our mission is to promote diverse comic books, graphic novels, and animation. And get more, that's okay, get more diverse voices on the table. And I'm going to let each of my panelists introduce themselves. So go ahead. All right. To start. Oh, yeah, you can scoot the mics up if you want. Hello. Oh, okay. Hi, I'm Robin Smith. Um, I'm a Jamaican cartoonist. I illustrated Wash Day Diaries and uh, Nubia Real One and The Saddest Angers Black Girl in Town. And I'm at Table K9. So come check me out after. <laughs> Hello, um, I'm Lucie Briand. I'm an illustrator and comic book writer and artist from France. Uh, I do children's book illustrations, a variety of comics that you can read online, and uh, I've done a graphic novel called Thieves that's just coming out. You can Ooh. get it <laughs> yay, <laughs> uh, in advance at the No Bro table. Uh, it's W7677, I think. Thank you. Hi, I'm um, Dick Carroll. I'm an Australian cartoonist, but I'm based out of New York. Uh, my work is mostly comics, but I'm also a fashion illustrator, so I work for editorial and other, other things for fashion brands. Hello, I'm Rebecca Mock. I am a comic book artist and illustrator, uh, most recently of Salt Magic. Um, which has a lot of nice fashion in it, so I'm very <laughs> excited to talk about it today. And uh, I'm at um, table H12A. All right, perfect. Woo. Um, and on the screen, we will have some awesome photos of inspiration, pieces from these awesome artists, and I'm starting it off by doing a favorite fashion icon poll where you can vote and determine the winner, except that it seems as though the poll may not be working. Oh, no. <laughs> but that's all right, because after, you can go ahead and vote through my website, inclusioncomics.com, with a K. Uh, Instagram or Twitter both have the link as well, Inclusion Comics. And people have already started to vote, so I'll announce that right now. Is it, Lucy, is the name Jorges or George? George. Is it George? I'm yes. not sure if it's French. George is in the lead. Oh. Very exciting. Um, yes, so George. I'll announce the winners later, since I cannot do that at the end of this awesome panel. And with that, we can go ahead and get into the questions. Woohoo! So my first question is talking about the process of creating characters. So when do you start thinking about fashion and or <laughs> does fashion ever influence your character design? And Lucy, why don't you go ahead and start? Um, so for me, when I do research for characters and like I start writing a comic, I just kind of start with the characters and draw them over and over again. And fashion is always present, like from the beginning, because I feel like you can say and like describe the character super quick with fashion. Like with comics, since it's such a visual art, like you just open the book and just with like the clothes you put the characters in, you can already tell a lot to the reader, like, oh, that's the like cool punk girl. Oh, that's the, the one that looks more like elegant and low tone. So you can. It's just an easy way to like, have a character, have a presence, and have an identity really, really quick. So from the beginning. Like, and sometimes just sketching clothes and sketching like, nice fashion. I have like, these big boards that I, where I put like, references. Um, I can just like, organize them by character, and I get like, a general vibe. And I'm like, oh, that's this character. That's this one. So that's all. Do you all want to add? Anybody want to add? It's hard if you don't. Um, <laughs> with uh, with Soul Magic, yeah, I was thinking about this. The uh, from the beginning, I wanted fashion to be a big part of, of the the major characters, and because it was a period piece, I had to do research into historical fashion, and it's it takes place in an interesting time period. Uh, 1919 was sort of like we were moving out of one fashion into the the flapper fashion that people know of from the 20s. So it was like post Edwardian, uh, pre flapper, and there was this great mix of styles, and, and so I had this like open um, sort of uh, 
I could make the characters like shapes anything I wanted because fashion was so wild in that year. And so that was a big part of um, creating, like one character is salt, so she's very angular, and one character is sugar, so she's a lot of like roundness. Um, so shapes was where I began with the character designs and fashion played into that. I found fashion that like worked for their shapes. I just realized I could be putting photos of that up while you were talking. I'm well, so yeah, sorry. We're we just examples. Go? Yes, I'm going to skip through to get to examples of the fashion, but I'll pay attention to who's speaking and put up. Oh, this is taking forever. Oh, here we go. That's all right. Are these yours? These are yours. Yeah, right? yeah. All right, we'll stop here. Look, ooh, fashion. Uh, <laughs> ooh. Um, we can keep going now um, with the next question, and it is what is more likely to influence your fashion style when illustrating your personal style or your art style? And Robin, you can start with this question. I'm going to find your art while you're speaking. Sure. Um, I feel like it's, it's a mix of both. I, like, I really like to shop for each character online when I'm working. So I'll be like, OK, I know what your body shape is. I know, like, oh, is this not available in your size? Guess what? You're not going to get it. And then like, <laughs> kind of move through. And because I'm trying to think, a, a lot of the work that I do is like contemporary. And it's all like, it's mostly like black girls. And especially like in Washe Diaries, this is Nubia that's on the screen right now. Oh, let me I have photo. this, I mean, I have like. There we go. Oh, yeah, here they all are. So I think a lot about like their body shape and um, working with Jamila Rouser. She's the writer, I'm the illustrator. Um, she sent me a mood board of what they each like and like what they eat, what they drink, what they like, what they don't like. And like all of that pours into their clothes and the colors, like each of them wears a different color. So we use that to sort of differentiate their personalities. But it is a mix of like, what Jamila has given me, what I wish I could afford, <laughs> um, and also like just shapes I like to draw personally. Um, I really love um, drawing like transparent, like giving the illusion of transparency and see-through fabrics, which is why like Cookie has like those see-through sleeves. Um, and that plaid was a mistake because I had to draw plaid in every panel. <laughs> and actually now I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> Um, because one character also has like a lighter pink side and a darker pink, and I had to remember what side that was on every panel as well. Mm. Oh, um, buy my book. <laughs> 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 um, I hope that answers the question. Yeah, yeah, that answers the question. Perfectly. Do you find yourself dressing like your characters? I, I definitely do. Yeah. Like, I have so many high waisted pants now because of drawing Nubia. Mm. Um, she just, I was like, I, it's just easier for me to draw someone with high waisted pants because then I know where oh, like a shirt will that. fall on them instead of yeah. thinking about all the stuff in between. <laughs> it's really, I find it really interesting. I, yeah. I always end up, I can, and I'm never sure where the starting point is if I'm dressing like the guys that I'm drawing <laughs> or if I'm drawing them because I want to look like them. And it sounds, <laughs> it sounds like you have a similar. The shape comes naturally when yeah. you like, when you see yourself wearing it and you know how you move in it, mm -hmm. I think then it becomes exactly. easier, it's to, easier draw. to draw. It's easier to draw. Also, as cartoonists, aren't we all kind of trying to be cartoon characters? I definitely am. Absolutely. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. like, have you seen the people walking around at SPX to the <laughs> Yeah. Yes. <laughs> they're here tonight. Yeah, they're right here. <laughs> yes. You guys are always so inspiring. <laughs> so I get all my fashion advice. I come to SPX and I'm like, all right, Pinterest. <laughs> today. Yeah, this is the red carpet for cartoonists. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. All right. Ooh. Um, this next question is specifically for Rebecca and Dick, since you both had an interest in it. And I'm not going to single you out for any other reason than you had an interest, I promise. <laughs> um, this is not a surprise. Um, where do you look for inspiration? Rebecca, this is more for illustrating fashion from a different time period, especially with Salt Magic. And Dick, this is more for different cities, countries, and cultures, since that's mm -hmm. more where you focus. Mm -hmm. um, well, yeah, I, Salt Magic is the third historical um, comic that I've drawn, and the first two were set in the 1860s, uh, but they were also nautical, so they weren't just 1860s, they were, uh, they were about sailors who traveled all over the world, so like that fashion was very, supposed to be very eclectic, it was mixes of old things that came before, and also trying to create sort of like links to modern fashion in a way, like create silhouettes that you sort of recognize the characters as. Um, so for inspiration, for research, I, I do a lot of um, trying to find specific images from like a specific year, and tr like candid photos or illustrations even. Um, actually, I find like illustrations and paintings from the time period very useful because it's not just what people wore, but how people drew, how they wore them. So for Salt Magic, there's a comic that I used as style inspiration, which is Gasoline Alley, and it's one oh, of the, it, is it one the of first these? few slides. 
Ooh. of my section. Um, and Gasoline Alley is a comic fashion. strip that started in the 1910s. And uh, I looked at the early years of it, and I looked at how they drew. Like they were draw, they were wearing a lot of baggy pants. A lot of the men wore baggy pants, but also they, he drew them in this like balloony way. Aha. And so that's mm -hmm. the silhouette that they wanted in their minds is something I wanted to capture in the characters. And the same with the, the fashion for the Salt Witch, and she's supposed to be a fashion icon in the book. Um, so I was looking at fashion illustration and trying to uh, sort of yoink that look uh, into the comic itself. I like the phrase, yoink that look. <laughs> it's interesting. It, like that bagginess implies the heavy cloth. So yes, yeah, anyway, the heavy wool pants line. that they would mm -hmm. wear. Yes, Another exactly. Panel. Which is very There's hot to more. draw. Yeah, well, it actually, it helped, really, because exactly. I usually, I found, I changed my style. I usually mm -hmm. draw legs tapered down, very mm -hmm. skinny, because I was drawing 1860s comics, and all of those pants taper down to very small ankles. But by the 1920s, everything is very wide, so that was something fun to get to learn how to draw. Do you, are you really obsessed with being accurate, or do yes. you just want to be more? Ac for no reason, really. <laughs> it, it pleases me to be accurate. I find it, I, I think, coming from a different standpoint where I'm Wee. more likely to be creating uh, comics and drawings that are trying to describe a contemporary time or a space. Like, I've, I've done series about how people dress in different neighborhoods in New York City or how uh, people might dress in different countries that I visit and things. So, but I, I don't do any research. <laughs> <laughs> or I'm always researching. This is this is what I'm. Well, are you looking at what people it? wear every in the day, all yeah. the time? And I've worked in the industry, Got and it. I have done. That's and, research. And I, exactly. I think everything I do is research. That's yeah, my. Yeah, that counts. And then it all sort of becomes this one thing in your mind, and then I sort of have an idea of how I think people look on the Upper West Side, how old guys dress on the Upper West Side. It's like this specific thing. I think, which is what Rebecca said too. I think is that what cartoonists can do is simplify things in a way. If you were to draw someone sitting in front of you, it wouldn't necessarily be a good like reference or example of what everyone looked like at that time, but you can sort of simplify things in an easier way with, with cartoons that mm -hmm. I think is, yeah, I think that's what makes fashion interesting for yeah, drawing. Yeah, yeah. As far as drawing it, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or you can go in the other direction and draw flat over everything. Oh, like Robin, really you can make it more <laughs> I felt difficult. that so hard. <laughs> But it goes either way. It nightmare. was worth it, though. It's great plaid. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah, and who doesn't like plaid? I mean, it's timeless. Um, let's see. Ooh. Um, our next question is, has fashion ever dictated a storyline or arc and or, so many ors, and or played a pivotal role that you weren't expecting? And obviously, this question will be completely different for all of you. Mm -hmm. um, and Robin, you can start. Sure. Um, so I... Getting into like Nubia Real One specifically, I again, nu so Nubia is um, Wonder Woman's twin sister, um, and it, we redid it so that she was like a 16 year old. So we had to think about like a 16 year old like black girl and like what she would wear, like, and it was like again contemporary. Um, but what came unexpectedly was thinking about like how she would like dress for a protest, which is like oh, what she has photo, on yeah. here. Oh, um, previously, like, like, oh no, you're good. Find it, but I found it. <laughs> um, but also thinking about the way that clothes can show, like, the closeness of character. So in the picture that you had up before, um, are her moms, and they're sharing one um, yeah, pair of pajamas got... because one one spoiler alert is well, let I me mean, not spoil it. It's very tall. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, so she wears the pants, and then, which now that I'm saying that out loud, it's weird. <laughs> she is wearing pants, and other mom is wearing shirts. <laughs> um, but thinking about like their relationship, um, I feel like clothes somehow, sort of, like, made its way into my brain in showing how relationships could work in the book, and then thinking about like Nubia and how she becomes more confident over time and what she would wear as she becomes more confident is something I, again, didn't really think that hard about until. So it did surprise me in that, like, it naturally came to me to, like, draw her in clothes. She probably, like, keeps in the back of her closet because she's never had the confidence to wear it, which, like, I think about my closet. Um, I, everything becomes very personal when I'm making my own comics, obviously. Um, but thinking about all the clothes I don't have the confidence to wear being in one section of my closet and what 
I think Nubia's confidence section of her closet looks like. Um, and it's the same with the girls in Wash Day Diaries and um, just learning more about them. And I think that is like, I hope this is answering the question, yeah, but it like becomes more surprising as like you working on something for like over a year, you will eventually figure out that what you're doing is surprising. <laughs> Everything's a surprise is what I'm hearing. Um, does anybody want to Do you, I love what you said before about how you shop for them online. <laughs> <laughs> do you keep, I just have this image that you've, you've got all these little shopping carts. I do. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> sort of just, I, I also I screenshot great. everything yeah, and I yeah, also yeah, keep yeah. them in reference folders. Like, well, yeah, there are that. specific clothing items I find just researching and I'm like, oh, well, that's what they're wearing in that scene now. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So can you shop for your characters? Like, are there like, like real clothes out there that are in your comics that I could potentially find and then buy. Like, yes. Nubia's, Nubia's party outfit is Ooh, straight from Forever 21. A, I know there's a photo of that. Oh, I literally skipped Amazing. it. There, it's straight oh, that, that is very Forever, Forever 21. 21. Those heels too, I have those earrings. That is satisfying. <laughs> that's great. But I think also sometimes, like as you said, there's the part that's like, oh, I've found this thing online. And then there's the part that's like, oh, I'm going to have to draw this outfit for like 20 pages. Mm -hmm. So you can find something that looks like it, but not with the terribly complicated print pattern. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Just like on the comic, it's just dots. But maybe if you find it online, it's going to be <laughs> something way more elaborated. Because then you have to draw it very, a lot of angles, a lot of things. That's so. right. Buttons are yeah, always a problem. Do you shop for clothes and you, you think like, well, they can't wear that because I'm not drawing it for 50 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so that's out. You find the simple version. Too many ruffles. <laughs> there can so never be too many ruffles. <laughs> what? <laughs> Ruffles are not something there can be too many of. There's a <laughs> character in uh, the, the Sugar Witch in Soul mm -hmm. Magic has, uh, uh, so she's based on like Gothic Lolita fashion, so she's very much anachronistic. Um, and all of her dresses I designed myself based on like mixes of things. But one, one of her dresses is covered in like different color pom poms. <laughs> and there's a pattern on it of candy like underneath all of the pom poms. <laughs> and Every, every yeah, panel she's in oh. took me hours to draw. Well, yeah, just, just thinking this, about it. I don't think it's hours. <laughs> oh, no. We've got a surprise. But it's her character is about here. like yeah, this extravagance. Is not mine, but whatever. Yeah. So that, it, it needed to be that way. But yeah. oh, it was so punishing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got a bit over eager with the slideshow, and I think I went to the next one. So here's a preview, by the way, <laughs> for the next panel in here, I bet, which is exciting. Anyway, <laughs> I'm just letting everybody know if you're like, whoa, that's a weird outfit. <laughs> that's what that is. Oh yeah, are we, are we done with our slideshow? Yeah, I think I <laughs> yeah, was like, I back. need to find this and just assumed it would loop forever. But, oh. So that's totally my bad. But that's all right. We don't need AIDS. We can keep going. We don't have a slideshow. We got this. Um, were you all done with that question or did you have anything else to add? Oh yeah, Dick, did you have anything yeah. that surprised you about? Really well, it's design. always for me because I'm usually drawing semi-autobiographical comics yeah. about clothing or I'm doing clothes for clients and they want me to draw specific clothes. I think the most surprising thing is often just how attached you get to them after you draw them. And you, like we were talking about before, it's sort of always, it's hard to tell if you were attached before you drew them mm -hmm. or after you drew them. And then you s were, mostly I work in men's clothing, which is more about these weird little details that no one that wasn't involved in the industry would notice. Mm -hmm. And when you're a cartoonist, you notice them even more, so everything's even more highly attuned. I'm noticing that's a slightly different tan to that, and this is this brown is a slightly different brown to that brown, and it just sort of ruins your whole life. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't like that part? I love it, but yeah. you, know, you can't turn it <laughs> All off. All right, very fair. And you said something that made me think of a question, but then I forgot it. So I'll go back to this one at some point, because sure. I came up with a new surprise question. Oh, good. Um, but we can... <laughs> I heard somebody say, oh, good. <laughs> um, yippee. Um, we can go to the next one until I remember. Um, and the next one is, have you ever hidden an Easter egg in a character's outfit that no one knows but you until now? <laughs> and Lucy, you can start. Um, so there's a few in the comics. So uh, first off, like, a lot of the clothes I do own. Because like, <laughs> <especially, laughs> one, one of the, like, the main characters, she has see. this big puffy pink coat. And like th that's on the cover. I don't know if the cover is in there, but I think so. I'm gonna try and find a photo. I'm like find it easier to draw if you own the piece. Sometimes, like especially for this big like pink coat, because it's like very big and very fluffy. Mm -hmm. So the fact that I had it, I was like, nice. I can see how it goes on the body. So many um, of these images are mine. I'm 
<laughs> and like, so in the comic, they keep going to different parties for a reason I won't divulge. <laughs> but, uh, so, oh yeah, perfect, this one. So this is one of the last parties in the book. And like at this point, I was like 180 pages in doing like a bunch of different parties. And, like, and that's the thing, like, because I don't like to pencil, I get very lazy. I don't like doing the same drawings over and over again. So I just did like the storyboard. And like I did a bunch of potatoes and wrote party. And then I got to the page and I was like, ah, oh. yeah, that's how you do it. <laughs> <laughs> yep. there, there and so like oh. six months Houses. later, I'm at the last party and I'm just like, I can't, I can't do like, random characters again like so i asked every one of my friends to send me a picture of them like in their best party outfit so oh. everyone on oh, the page so smart. Is oh my god that's amazing so that's like the, the that easter egg of so this part smart. so cute did like, i know her do your friends know her yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. i told them and then i sent them the drinks they were like yeah i'm at the party oh my god wait what's did amazing did you put yourself in it well i mean you uh, put your I'm, clothes in it but are you in it i'm not sure i'm in the book i put everyone i know in it i put my cat in it mm. <laughs> all right fair and also, like, I'm not sure it's in the slide because like, I saw about it on the plane on the way here. Because like, one person came to me at a signing and was like, oh, is this a reference to it? So there's this old ma uh, Jose manga called Kimi wa Pet, if anyone has Kimi read wa it. Kimi Wapeto? Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yes. So, and there's a drawing in it that's just like one of those drawings that just imprinted into my brain as a teen. Mm -hmm. And there's a reference to it in the comic. Because there's a scene where they like dress each other. And like, I. Uh, used one of the drawings as the reference and oh someone came to me and was like, is it a reference? And I was like, yes. <laughs> so maybe so if you read Kimi Wa Pet and then you read the comic, you'll see it. <laughs> that's oh, it. that's a good yeah. Easter egg. Reason to read the comic, just Easter eggs. That's so good. Oh my God. Uh, I, uh, I yeah, have a yeah. sort of. Th there's a slide in there. Uh, there are three oh, different party scenes in oh. Salt Magic. So they're We're giant find crowd them. We're scenes. We're going to do it. And the, the more colorful one, so they're sort of an Easter egg thing, but it's a huge two-page spread of just creatures because it's a magic party. And every single creature had to be unique and different and sort of like believable in this fantasy world, but uh, surprising. There, there we go, that's a, a crop of it. Um, and I, I spent a lot of time drawing each character, um, mm. but I, you, know, you get to a point where you're just trying to fill the page, so you're, it's very stream of conscience and you don't really realize what you're drawing until you're done and you've created like 200 crazy weird uh, people. Um, <laughs> so I had a lot of fun posting screenshots of this and asking people to tag themselves. <laughs> <laughs> uh, everybody had a different uh, favorite, uh, but there were, there were some like four, forerunners. Personally, I really like the man in the giant like coat off to the Is left. It? He's like, I think a there's blue a blue sort of Hold starry on. coat. <gasps> Hold on. And he's got a mustache. Yes. Hold on. Where's, where's left, 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 all the way on the left. It almost look like wings. Oh. Yeah, thing? yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I don't know who he is. I don't know what he does. I think he's a wizard. <laughs> um, but that's his party hat. It's just like a mink stole, but it's dark blue, mm. and that's it. That's all he's got on. <laughs> he's having a sensual evening. <laughs> so that was fun. I, I loved doing all the party scenes, but they like they were a torture. But um, oh, I really tried to push it. Mm. And make make a lot of weird things. <laughs> yeah, that's the like the party scenes are the scenes that are both hell to draw, mm -hmm. but also the scenes when you can just like in the corner put something that yeah. Yeah. you know and you're like ha. like if, if I had someone to sat there and looked at it for a while, like they'll notice there's a lizard on the ground or there's fish in the pond and everything. Like, yeah, I'm like absolutely. On a lizard now. <laughs> now in the like there's a giant party spread for a new be a real one, and kid and play is in it like, and uh, also. <laughs> Thank you for the laugh. <laughs> That's a kid in play. <laughs> they're from a movie called House Party. Watch it. Um, also, there's a scene where they're like all drinking from like a giant punch bowl of alcohol, but it's supposed to look like the Archie cover where they're all drinking from a milkshake. <gasps> oh. Yes. Um, you're right, I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> and um, it, it's just so much fun like putting things in comics. I draw all my friends in my comics as well. Um, there's a library scene and it's just all these books and other people's comics that I've read. That's so um, cute. But my favorite Easter egg in, um, I mean, I'm talking so much about Nubia and I don't even have that book here, but whatever. Um, in Nubia, she, I was watching a lot of like older American sitcoms and so I was watching Seinfeld while I was drawing the scene, and I was like, in Nubia's universe, Elaine Bennis is the main character. <laughs> so it's oh Bennis. 
So she is wearing like a Benis shirt in, ah, with there the. A photo? Do yeah, know there is. It, when she's like getting ready for the protest, she's taking the Benis shirt oh, off. It's gonna take it forever. Um, yeah, I'm so sorry for all of my images. That's it, okay. Hold on, oh, wait. That was it. Oh yeah. yeah. So that's the Benis oh, oh God, shirt. That's so good at PowerPoint. Uh, it's good. But she also wears it when she meets Wonder Woman for the first time. <laughs> Um, but yeah, Nubia's That's world, Elaine Bennis is the main character. So oh my gosh. <laughs> I yeah. want, I want this to be real. I want it. Yeah. I want an episode yeah. of Bennis. Right. <laughs> I think those old sitcoms do such a good job of characterizing people by their dress. Oh it's, it's, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's something that we don't see as much in TV anymore. I'm like in my head, like, wow, what other things have you guys like stuck in comics? Like like this, where you like have just been like, in this universe, this is different. <laughs> like, that's gotta be so much fun, you got all the power. You can make whatever you want real. Yeah, there's so many like bootleg TV shows in my comics. There's like <laughs> ZBD, which is Dragon Ball Z. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Creating fake brands, that sounds like fun. That's like a whole job. All right, <laughs> the next question that I have is what is the funniest outfit you've ever given a character? And Dick, you can go ahead and start. <laughs> go crazy. I, I put my hand up for this one. I don't know if it's particularly funny, but I find it funny. I, I've been doing um, a lot of work with this sort of social media brand thing, friends of mine in New York called Old Jewish Men. Um, it's like a group of old Jewish guys that just sort of hang out and convert about stuff. And if you flick through, yeah, I was like, I, I did I a shirt to for them um, based on a Where guy that we, that we saw in Coney Island one day. Just this sweaty, really tan South Brooklyn oh, was guy. It the, the guy in the chair. And he just was wearing these really tight, really little shorts. <laughs> and he just had a tin can body, and he was just so tan. And it, it was just amazing. Just one of those beach lizards, just outside <laughs> every day. I'm sorry this is taking so long. I don't know where I'm supposed to be pointing this. I, think I'm I gave you so many images. I'm so sorry. Oh, I found it, and then it went hey, times three. There we go. go. There he is. There he is That's with so his good. Nathan's hot dog. <laughs> and, yeah, it was, yeah. It's definitely a very funny outfit. I see the, the tin can body. <laughs> Thick top and the little legs. <laughs> uh, I, I'm trying to think. I don't have a lot of goofy outfits. I mean, the salt, the sugar witch is a good example. She's supposed to be over the top. Actually, I'm not gonna go find, find her it. Page. She's got green hair. She's a little girl. She's supposed to be like a doll. And the implication uh, in the book is that she's she's really like an old crone, like a, a traditional witch. But she look she changes her look because she like glamours herself uh, to look like this little doll. And her outfits are all like doll outfits, uh, and they're very clown like almost. They're they're very um, ridiculous, but they're not funny. I, I would say, I, I think they're quite beautiful. I think they're funny in like the clown way where you can like appreciate it. Yeah. Do we appreciate clowns? Actually, maybe some people don't appreciate clowns. <laughs> That's clowns not a great analogy. Or like she's a gothic Lolita, so like it's I wanted it to be an outfit that is almost too much in real life. Like, mm -hmm. but it's a car it's a comic, so I can make it as ridiculous as I want. Like so many frills and giant bows and candy in the hair and everything. This um, is the dress you were talking about. That's one of them, yeah. Are, are like so ruffles one of your favorite things to draw? Like, oh, I love ruffles and I love mm -hmm. lace. Mm -hmm. I mean, I hate drawing it, but oh my lace God. Well. Yeah. It looks so You put beautiful. so much like passion into it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and stripes, adding little stripes to things. and Yeah, and all the little dolls too. Yeah. Yeah. You dress all the dolls. She collects dolls from girls who uh, mistreat them. So she adopts the dolls and takes care of them. Who's got the bunny doll? That's my question. The bunny doll is great. Yeah. yeah. Who's the bunny doll? <laughs> I don't. Oh, I, don't, I mean, I don't have an answer for you. Oh well, yeah. It's a good. <laughs> question. I'm just like in my head, like which child wants to give away a beautifully dressed bunny-shaped doll? Because I would keep that forever. Well, the, you know, little girls mistreat their toys a lot, <laughs> especially in the olden days. They sort of just, you know, thrashed them and stuff. <laughs> so someone had to take care of them. <laughs> Can either of you think of a funny outfit or no? It's uh, all right if you can. No, no. I'm not going to make you um, <laughs> think of one now. One in particular, but one of my favorite things to draw if I want to like have a character look a bit goofy, but also real, is draw them in a pair of Crocs. Because I think Crocs yes. just <laughs> look so good. <laughs> They're great cartoon shoes. Absolutely. They're perfect. They're like Absolutely. cartoon shoes. And then if you draw a character wearing Crocs, it just looks no Crocs? already I'm just like, ah, oh, I relate. No yeah. I'm trying to hunt down the Crocs. Same. Hard to so I, like, I really like seeing drawings, drawings of them. Are there Crocs? No Crocs. Uh, I'm trying to find maybe, Crocs, but that's all right. Not in this one. Maybe in the last one, like the sketch. I don't remember oh, the if sketch. I gave Crocs I to past. That's all right. But we can't maybe, find Crocs. Like, sounds like something I'd do. 
like th this one no no crocs that's all right but crocs. like the character in the middle is the one who would have the crocs <laughs> the signed crocs <laughs> see this, is this from life did you see these people uh no so i think one of my favorite hobbies is like people watching but not drawing i hate drawing in public i have this like school thing where i just like hide my book like this like no one can know what i'm doing but just watching how people dress, especially since I do like slice of life comics that take place now with a lot of teenagers. And you, I think it always shows when like you have this comic that's supposed to take place now and it has teenagers and they, they don't like they dress like adults and like, ah, that's weird. So I try to like, look at how teens dress and mm -hmm. like how we were saying at the beginning, like just just by. So this is uh, like a sketch from the project I'm working on now. And I was like looking for the characters and just like by drawing their outfits and their different vibes, I'm just like, yes, this is like what I want to say about them. This is who they are. And just like, so it's a combination of like seeing how people dress, seeing clothes I want to buy mm -hmm. and who's going to wear the Crocs. That's yes, <laughs> love that. Yeah, love that. <laughs> who gets the Crocs? I feel like you're talking about like teenage fashion and I'm like, I see quite a lot of teenagers in my day-to-day -day life. And <laughs> yeah, you can definitely tell when somebody's like, I'm going to draw a teen and then they've got like, a very adultish outfit, yeah. whereas, or if you go to school and everybody's in their pajamas, yeah, <laughs> like, so yeah. it's definitely something that I feel like teenagers at least notice. Adults might not notice because you just like have to do the better. research. Yeah, do mm -hmm. the research. Go back to high school. Go back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Love it. just look. Also, now go on I feel like with yeah, yeah, yeah just go on TikTok. That's what I did. Yeah. Like, because All the teens want to dress like Bella like from also Twilight now, now with the internet, like kid, like teens. When I had, like, when I was a teenager, like on the internet there wasn't like social media and stuff like this. So like you, ha we just all dress the same. <laughs> like, we just like, as to, you didn't want to be like the one that would stand out. And now they have like, everyone can find their tribe. So I've seen like, I see like teens having like this, such a strong like fashion identity so young. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, I'm a cottage witch. And I'm like, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> cottage boy, I love cottage boy. <laughs> Tell me more. What, so Lucy, you, just, you observe and then you sort of like internalize it. Yeah. And then you just make it up. And then I make it up, like I... Not make it up, but you sort no, of... No, yeah, I internalize Create some it. character in your head. Yeah, that's the thing. Because you see, like at some point in France, uh, all the girls were wearing like the big sweaters mm -hmm. with the um, bike shorts and then the mm. sneakers with the socks. And like they were all, like a lot of them were dressed the same and meeting up and they all had the same outfit but in different colors. <laughs> I think that's a tribe thing. <laughs> you know exactly so, what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. I've seen those and outfits. And here, I mean, at SPX, like you go to SPX, you wear your colorful button-up shirt, mm -hmm. and you make sure that the hair dye is fresh. Mm -hmm. uh, and look you at, wear all I could feel you looking at me when you said the hair dye thing. <laughs> I mean, look at me. I, I've got my uniform on. And you can tell, like, everyone who dresses kind of the same way all sort of like, you mm -hmm. know, we find each other here. Yeah, How we fashion. keep coming back. Yeah. <laughs> Come back for the outfits, not the comics. <laughs> I feel like fashion is very helps people connect. Like, mm -hmm. like that's everybody here is just like so well dressed and you all I mean, that's subjective, I should say that's subjective. Um, but I think that like you can tell. Everybody here has got a similar interest by the way they dress and you can see yeah, I mean basically it's sort of what you guys like, just said. I think in people sick try to adult. signal it. Like at, at a mm -hmm. show like this you wanna um you, you wanna bring out the shirt that you feel like is going to uh, sort of blend in with the, the general crowd or, or sort of match the energy of this kind of event. And you wouldn't dress quite the same way if you were going to a wedding or to a <laughs> or school presentation, you? or would you? Um, but it, it's fun to, I guess, curate your outfits for different events. The way that, and I think, I think we think about our characters this way too. Mm -hmm. um, like party events, outfits, and vibe versus like adventure outfit and vibe. Mm -hmm. Different, they have mm -hmm. to be different. You can't have a character dressed the same way all through the book. Unless your character is like really into one outfit. Unless yeah, they're stuck on a boat. Oh yeah, or they're stuck on a boat. <laughs> They've only got one outfit. And they only have one. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of not fun, I can imagine, only having one outfit. It's not fun to draw. No. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting to true. have more. All right, this is my favorite question. And I've only asked it in person once, but I ask it on all of my live streams. And it has nothing to do with fashion. <laughs> <laughs> but that's OK. Um, so my next question is, if you could meet any comic character, who would it be and why? Mm. Oh, I didn't pick a person to start. You guys oh. can just. 
I, I, I answered this question on your you live stream. You did answer it on a live stream. I can so bring, I can, you I can bring, bring it my back. answers back. Um, <laughs> I said on the live stream, I said Tintin. Uh, I love Tintin style. Mm -hmm. um, like, like I was thinking about fashion, mm -hmm. but also just like characters whose worlds I want to inhabit. Like I want to go on adventures with Tintin uh, and, and like run around the city with him and meet his dog. Um, and the other one was uh, Jaeger from Finder, which is a, a, a small press comic series. Um, and Carlos B. McNeil t tabled at SPX for, for many years. Um, and Finder was one of my first like big comic influences. And Jaeger, the main character, is really enigmatic. And the world it, that he lives in is this like sci-fi world, uh, which is so interesting. Um, and I've always wanted to just, I wanted to go into that world so badly. Um, and I also really want to meet my character from my new comic, Die Horny. There's a giant monster woman. Um, <laughs> I, I want to, I want to delicately uh, uh, hold her hand or, or just sort of bring her things. Um, <laughs> she's great. I would love to hang out with the girls from Ghost World. I don't know if this comic is oh, popular yeah. anymore. Enid and Rebecca, I just think they're so cool. And we could just hang out at the local diner and complain about how everyone looks. That's not Judge in everybody. The yeah. <laughs> I think is one is that one of the characters for the poll? Yeah. It was right. One of the Hold on, the poll. guys. This is coming in handy. I've never done a panel with a presentation. I'm so excited. If you can't tell, which is why I keep clicking through it. <laughs> it is fun. I love it. I don't even know if I'm going the right direction. We'll find out. Anyway, you can keep talking <laughs> while I'm clicking, if you would like. Um, so one of my favorite comics is Richard Thompson's Cul de Sac the comic strip series. And there's a whole bunch of kids. The main character is called Alice, and she's just a troublemaker. And she has one of her classmates, it's called Dill. And he just has this really great um, hat that it wear, he wears in the winter that has just like these two horns with pompons. And it just like when she's not there, he just looks through the mailbox to see if she's here, and he waits every day. And I'm like, <laughs> I, want, I just want to be there. I don't know if I want to be an adult, like with the mom and just take care of the kids, or just be a kid with them and then go to school and wreak havoc. <laughs> so that's my favorite. Like, I want to be in Curlesac. It's just so warm and nice. This is very hard. Um, <laughs> it's a so hard many. question. I immediately just tried to think of comics set at the beach. <laughs> 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 because I would want to be in a comic at a beach. But, I mean, my answer is always like Archie comics related. My, mm -hmm. like, that's Veronica and the Pole because I love Veronica Lodge. There's one comic specifically where Archie is talking about having to choose between Betty and Veronica and there is a panel where <laughs> Veronica has him on a leash. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm gonna end that. <laughs> You're gonna end it there. Incredible. Wow. That's it. <laughs> Um, it seems like you guys are more interested in joining worlds than meeting specific people, and I love that. That sounds so much fun. I don't even think about like the possibility of just going into this world and like hanging out with everybody. I'm always like, pick one. But that's like a better option. Yeah, I guess you're maybe like, who would you want to bring out of the comic and mm. into our world? I meant the question however you want. You don't have to answer. I have it. Like, I don't know if I would want to do that to them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're them. You just take them like, ah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Go back. All right, but those are all perfect answers. I love, <laughs> I love this question. I, you can definitely tell. My next little tidbit, we've got a fun little segment called Rapid Fire, oh. and these are also not fashion related. These are this or that questions that I say really fast, and none of these people know what these questions are. They're uh -oh. a surprise, uh -huh. and you have to pick. And then arguments ensue. Okay, no arguments ensue. But <laughs> polite discussions ensue. Um, so my first one is zombies or vampires, since Halloween's coming up. Ooh. Just shout it out. Yeah. There's vampires. no order. Vampires. Vampires. Yeah. Oh, I'm really all right. Into, uh, <laughs> the, the what we do in the shadows TV show right now. <laughs> I yes, love messy vampires. Good. All right. Oh, I forgot that these are fast, so I need to go fast. <laughs> <laughs> um, next is sweet or sour? Sweet. Oh, sweet. Uh, sour. Ooh. Sour. Oh. Oh. This is the yeah. sweet How? side of the table. Ooh. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> sour plums. <laughs> <laughs> sour candy. Sour, yes. sour candy. But candy's meant to be sweet. No, 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 sweet no, comes no. out pure <laughs> sour. Pure <laughs> sour. Yeah. No, no, no. Um, this next one might cause an argument. I don't know. This one makes me nervous. This one always makes me nervous. It's Marvel or DC? Because I couldn't pick. Oh, Marvel. DC. Marvel. Oh, DC never mind. 100%. <laughs> uh, I don't care. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's, that's the biggest burden. That's, yeah, that's, that's fair. <laughs> 
Um, I guess DC has the better indie imprints. Has better indie, but has better movies. Mm -hmm. um, I love the characters so much more. I, and th they're, they're sillier characters. I think that's why I like them. <laughs> I don't know, I'm like, like gears are turning. I'm like, I don't even know where I'd go with this question. Why did I ask you guys? I feel kind of bad. <laughs> but you all had answers, so it totally works out. Um, next is iPhone or Android. iPhone. Sorry. IPhone. No, that's. Android. Android. Mm. Android. I can't. <laughs> I refuse. iPhone, you can like airdrop stuff really fast. Good for Absolutely. Work. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I need also, fast. I, I got to work. I need, I need to airdrop. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and I do have a question about this one. For our international guests, are iPhones like popular elsewhere? Because I've literally oh, everyone no has idea. an iPhone. Yes. Everybody everyone has an iPhone, has an iPhone yes. in Jamaica. I literally Absolutely. don't know. Yes. No one has any other phone. Oh, wow. I'm pretty sure my mom still also, calls. It a lot any of people have Crocs in Jamaica as well. It's very oh, popular. Yeah, nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right, that's my, my fun, interesting question that I just came up with right now because I was curious. Um, next is comedy or tragedy? A little Shakespeare. Comedy. Oh. Comedy. Oh, I love tragedy. tragedy. Yeah. I mean, I love tragic <laughs> operas so How much. How are we like, splitting down the yeah. table like this every we time? We didn't need to do this. <laughs> I wish it comes. <laughs> what, uh, listening to a really, really sad, depressing opera is great work music. Because <laughs> you are sad drawing. You are like, why am I doing this? And so, you know, Lucia is, is also sad because she just murdered her husband. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same vibe. <laughs> it brings in the vibes. Oh. That's right. I think at a certain drink, point, all the tragedy becomes that. a bit comic anyway. Oh, my yeah. gosh. <laughs> so you have both. Right. It's Just cyclical. make a comedy tragedy, and then you won't mm -hmm. have to pick. Those are the best, actually. Yeah. Mm. When it's a little bit funny, the, the sad parts hit harder. So that's yeah. a yeah. story writing tip. <laughs> think of an example, but I'm sure they exist. Mm -hmm. Are comedy tragedies a thing? We're, they're yeah, a thing. Definitely. They're definitely a thing. Mm -hmm. All right. And my last one is pizza, pineapple, or pepperoni? <sighs> there is a correct answer. <laughs> Just so you know. That's a hard one. No, Pepperoni. both at the same time. Yeah. Well, no. at the same time. What? That's a good move. Pepperoni yeah. and pineapple is a really it's good a pizza. Hot, strongly recommend. I'm not, yeah, I'm not, I'm not too we, mad about the pineapple on pizza. I feel like it's a big debate here in yeah. the US. Like, are you okay? okay? Pizza. Pizza. The answer I don't is pizza. have strong feelings. The, the answer, answer is pizza. The answer is it's lunchtime. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am not a pepperoni fan, so oh. I'm, I was oh, like... Fair. Somebody better say pineapple. I'm going to be sad. But you all said pineapple, so I'm not sad anymore. <laughs> um, and that was it for the very fun rapid fire segment, which means that it's question time. Woo, this is the audience participation part. I'm speaking really close to the mic for some reason. Have you been listening? Happens. You do not have to ask any questions about fashion unless you guys really want them to be about fashion. But I was just going to open it up. I saw you first. Yes. Oh, there are mics. If you want to go up to mic, you do not. I mean, you can scream. Actually, maybe don't scream. But better for COVID, I think. Yes. When designing fashion for comics, do you ever find yourself in a situation where you have an outfit that looks good on paper, but really would not work in person? And do you ever concern yourself with that? Like, do you do anything about that? Ooh. I mean, sometimes, but I think that's the part of the magic of comics. That you like, it's there's a lot of adventures to, to draw in comics. Like first of all, you have no budget, you can draw any outfit, and sometimes yeah, I draw outfits mm -hmm. and I'm like, oh, they would look silly or they would look too much in real life, or like they they're teenagers, so they probably like would look really bad because the quality wouldn't be there. Mm -hmm. But it's like, oh, it's a comic, who cares? Like it just adds to the fantasy of everything, especially like that's yeah, I think that's the fun part of comics. It's, it's not like a like uh, I don't know. If, I don't know the English part, sorry. <laughs> like those comics, but that use real life photographs. I don't know if they oh, exist here. Oh, yeah. They have yeah you, we use the same word you would use, I think. I forget. Yeah, the it's photo like a, comics? It's like an Italian word, right? No. No? What's the French word? Roman photo? It's like. Oh, no, I don't know. No, oh, but oh, photo, comics. right, okay. Yeah, yeah. those you, like, Fruity, since it's right? not photos, you can just draw when it, anything mm. and then it, mm. it works. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I That's think a legit way of doing comics, for mm -hmm. sure. You can get hung up on it, especially for someone like me, where mm -hmm. I am a lot of the time asked to draw specific pieces of clothing for a company that wants to sell that item of clothing. But, <laughs> but the simplification is, is kind of inherent in drawing. So like you were saying about Crocs, I think Crocs are 
<laughs> almost like the default shoe that you would just draw on a comic character anyway. It, they're, you just they're draw the little holes design. on them and bang, there they are. They're, they're and also, I like when you draw it onto a cartoon character, or if I see it on a character, I, I that makes me want to wear it more. Yes. Because like, wow, it looks great on that cartoon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I would like to be that cartoon. So. <laughs> they are a cartoon. It, shoe. Like, car people drawing Crocs on their characters uh, has totally like flipped my opinion of Crocs. <laughs> I really like them. Now. <laughs> I think they're great. They're beautiful shoes. Yeah. <laughs> a really big flip because I always I wasn't allowed to wear Crocs as a kid oh. um, and I never had an interest I thought they were terrible so this is totally changing my world bring, them, bring them back <laughs> but yeah, Crocs, I think are great. Yeah. Crocs are great Crocs, Crocs are, are great. great I think drawing something's like drawing like buttons on a shirt is almost always a bad idea unless you're drawing super, oh, whoops. super realistically no, oh, I, I think your drawings look I always great. draw buttons I, it, it's weird without them I draw, I draw fingernails on everything because yes. you got it, that style you, you got to have good nails or you have to think about the, how the characters keep their nails mm -hmm. that kind of thing uh, but as far as how it reflects in real life I definitely draw lots of outfits that would not look good in real life mm -hmm. and that could not exist could not right. exist yeah. that's the fun part yeah like mm -hmm. you said all right, we've got somebody else at the mic. If you want to ask a question, I'm not sure many will have time for it. Do you want to go to the mic right behind this person? Because um, that would speed things up a little bit, which is lovely. Um, so go ahead. So I'm wondering what each of your guys' is. Uh, oh, there's, there's another one over there. Wondering what each of the favorite or least favorite items of clothing would be to draw. It can either be like a detail or like a type of clothes. I hate drawing sandals, so. <laughs> Um, so, on least favorite, top hats. Top hats are horrible. Like they're really hard to draw from certain angles. Yes. <laughs> so, don't recommend the top hats. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I'm trying to think. I find shoes pretty hard. Shoes are hard. I love high heels. I have a bad, hard time drawing mm. them. Mm. I wish I could draw them better because I love to draw yeah. high heels. They're so beautiful. They're very complicated, three-dimensional objects. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then there's all of these little shapes in a shoe that, if you simplify it, yeah. aren't there. And then if you try to draw it, they look too detailed. Mm -hmm. It's I find it oh, very big, hard. Big dresses, because I had to draw the 1860s big hoop skirt dresses. I hate them. They really, they don't. They they can be elegant, like the the Belle, the Beauty and the Beast dress. Uh, they're such a bitch to draw. Never again. You, I think they look better in movement than. Yeah, <laughs> they're kind of silly looking. Mm -hmm. I think like looser pants I find really hard to draw mm -hmm. because I'm like losing the person's leg mm -hmm. in it yeah. and like thinking about like where their knee is and all that and then when they're crossing and they're walking. Also, like the bottom of a shoe when someone is walking, I think it might be about. the worst thing in the <laughs> world. It's so, so true. I, th so I think hard. shoes in general, like you try to think about how they look, and then you look in the mirror and you're like, feet look weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, like you never thought about it before, but then you see your real feet, you're like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> That's why. <laughs> yes. Shoes are weird. Shoes are so hard. Yeah, they're, they're so hard. And they're they're like little shoes. heads. Mm. Um, yeah. I would normally go back and forth, but do, you've been waiting for a while, right? Oh, you were the first why. hands. Oh. Yeah, so if you want to go, and then I'll do back and forth for as much time as we have left, which is not a lot, but that's okay. Yeah. Um, so uh, for uh, uh, when you wrote the entire scene and you had to do multiple uh, outfits uh, in different events in the comics, how do you keep track of, like, how, when do you plan which outfit the characters wear on, like, a certain scene, you know, like, and like, do you have to uh, like, like, discuss that with your editor? And um, like, you give them options, and then I was like, oh, like this is the outfit for this scene. Oh, I, I I designed each one for each scene, and I would label it, and I have a stack of sketches, and I would mm -hmm. try different outfits out, and I would draw the character in each one, and I'd be like, yes, no, yes, yes, this one should be for this scene actually, and then I would just refer to those sketches. So I had basically wardrobe. Um, designs mm -hmm. for every scene, mm -hmm. and it I, I was given carte blanche by the editor and writer to do whatever I wanted with fashion. Mm -hmm. uh, so I really went ham, but <laughs> planning it out saves you time later. Mm -hmm. You want to turn around and stuff. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yeah. No. no, yeah, I agree. I'm saying I have to. Same. Same. I would think same, same right? Same. That's yeah, what yeah, you yeah. gotta <laughs> do. Yeah. Same. Do not you have it up on the day. Especially, but the thing that's interesting when you do like a big crowd scene is having a few characters, even if they're just background characters that have really bold outfits. Mm -hmm. Like this, you can place them in specific places and just have this sense of space mm -hmm. really easily when you like change 
um, like the angles and stuff. And yeah. Like, oh, this character is here now. Yes. So mm -hmm. that's where we are. So that's like the little. So that's why it's good to pre-plan it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. All right, we've got time for one more speedy question. Um, so we're gonna go over here because I have been ignoring you guys. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, it's kind of a two-part question. The first part's really fast. I just wanted to hear you repeat where your booths work. So oh, I was going to say that at the end. Don't worry. Okay, perfect. Um, and then I guess the real question uh, is, in either your personal or your professional work, what's your favorite era to draw um, and why mm. in terms of the fashion? Um, I, I can go. I really love what people wear now. Um, I am not a big period piece person. I enjoy reading it from Rebecca. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, but I, I mean, I think it just has a lot to do with like, like black people in certain like times and I prefer now. <laughs> um, so that influences a lot of like the comics I make and what I like draw people in. I was trying to think. I, I, there are fashion eras I haven't drawn yet that I want to draw, and there's, and they're all sort of around the same time. I'm, I'm very samey, but I, I like the, the like turn of the century fashion, like late 1890s, early 1900s, the like, um, the sort of like it's the bustles were in the back, and there was like this weird thing happening with, with corsets, and I <laughs> love the shape of it, and it's, um, I really want to draw a comic in that, in that era. <laughs> That's my next goal. <laughs> well, I like mid-century America, but really I, I am mostly interested in the contemporary world and dress and how everyone has to think about everything all the time. And mm -hmm. if we have all this information that we're all trying to dilute into our brains and then we all mm -hmm. put it on our bodies every day. Mm -hmm. and everyone has an opinion about fashion, which I think is really interesting. Mm -hmm. Only food is similar in that way. I think <laughs> just oh. fashion and food. <laughs> And yeah, saying uh, more interest in what's happening now. What I like is that now with the internet, not only is fashion like having like, we're in the same moment like in time, but also in place. Like you can have, you can be influenced by fashion that's like from South Korea, or like from America, mm -hmm. and like everyone can communicate and have like this strong identity and sometimes it mixes. So like I like that what's happening now in fashion. Mm -hmm. Basically, now is fashionable, but every time is fashionable. <laughs> um, with that, we are out of time. Oh, you're holding Sorry. up the dish? Sorry, what thank you. What does one mean? But you can come oh, find us at our tables uh, to ask more questions, probably. Yes. We, do you guys want to list your tables? Oh, yeah. So that everybody can come find you. I'm going to start there. Oh, um, I'm at K9. Uh, I'm at W7677. I think I'm signing in like half an hour. Is that the back wall? Yeah, that's right by the entrance. You enter. Oh, you're at the front. Yeah, and gotcha. there I am, signing. <laughs> cool. uh, I'm at J10. Uh, and I am at H12A, uh, and I'm also at H1 tomorrow at 1 p.m. doing a signing. Ooh. So. Um, I don't have a table, but if you see me walking around, stop me and say hi. I promise I'm friendly. Um, and if you want to, in the future, vote and check out what the results are of this poll, um, Instagram or Twitter at Inclusion Comics with a K, and I will see everybody walking around. Woo! Thank you for joining thank us. You. Thank you, everybody.